So, I'm back this week with another video after posting a short film last week I filmed on this little Panasonic DMC FS10 digital camera. Roll the intro. As you probably all know, the 2000s hype is real. This isn't real. What is real? It's here. We're all back in this weird baggy pants style, oversized 90s, thousands, new metal era. It's just one of those days! Funky that it's actually retro. I'm feeling so old. I'm born. 1990, so I was living in this 2000s era, I was like 10 to 20 years old and I've got something with me today from that era. It's actually from 2010, so it's on the border to say so. It's this thing. It's a Panasonic Lumix DMC FS10 quite a mild mouthful digital camera. I got it from my girlfriend some time ago. I also told you about this camera in my What's in My Camera Bag video 2024. And I still carry it around with me and I still use it. First things first, some technical information about that camera. Hold on to your tables, I will read the technical information from my phone. It came out February 2010 in the color black, silver, blue, orange and pink. It's a compact camera with a CCD sensor and 12.1 megapixel. It shoots in JPEG, 24 bits, 8 bits pro color channel, what that even means, nobody knows. It can film, yeah, can film HD with 30 frames per second. Nice. And the video format, move, movie, MOV. It has a focal length of 28 millimeters to 140 five times digital zoom here. Then 28 millimeters are 45 millimeter equivalent. Yes. Uh, okay. That's f 2.8 wide and f. 6.9 in the tally and has autofocus with a face detection and an LCD monitor 2.7 inches with 240,000 picture points. Let's talk a little bit less about technical informations. Like, yeah, those technical informations seem pretty outdated today but to be honest 12 megapixel are enough so for printing like um being a free it's like that size i guess something like that yeah my experiences with this camera are uh, can be described as fun it's not more than that but not less. I had quite uh, a funny experience with it. I just throw it in the bag. If I don't want to use my Canon R8 or my Nikon because they are still pretty big cameras and I'm slowly getting into this whole compact camera theme where, with a fixed lens and stuff like that. And it's the same thing with the old GoPro. If you want to try things out, sorry, hmm. my friend, sorry, Henry. Hmm. 
<laughs> Again, when do you have to buy a camera for like 800 to 1800 bucks? Just to get them to the point, do I need it or do I, don't I need it? And if you don't need it, then you spend so much money for like just the experience. I don't know if that's worth it. So, for the beginning, if you or even if you're a beginner or a hobby photographer, this camera costs like 30 bucks on the used market. It's not that bad if it gets stolen or breaks at some point. You can take it with you if you don't want to do like the most serious business photography thing again. And the other point is it really helps you thinking about composition again. It doesn't quite work with the image quality, but if a good photo is a good photo, it doesn't matter with what you took it. You look like a little tourist. Like you don't look like a professional photographer. And this could be a really nice thing to do because people won't take you that serious, which can be a benefit sometimes. Let's talk a little bit about the negative things about this camera. Yeah, the resolution. It's good enough for printing, to be honest, if you're into something. It's good enough for posting pictures on Instagram. Instagram compresses the shit out of every picture. So 12 megapixels are clearly enough for that. But um, the video quality is bad. Like you see here. It has an image stabilizer which doesn't work too well. The autofocus is very often, very off. Also, I always shoot like one to one and a half steps underexposed because the camera overexposes quite a lot in standard mode and the battery doesn't really last long. So, my conclusion with this little fun camera is if you wanna have that specific style, this all digital camera style, especially with the videos, then go for it. I'm pretty sure you can get a stylization too with the Resolve result for Premiere Pro, but so you have it out of camera. It's fun, it's cheap, it's decent built, and yeah, it doesn't really have a high shutter speed or a good autofocus, but it doesn't have to nowadays. If you want to work professional, get some kind of a professional camera. And if you want to have something to have fun with, especially on vacation or with your friends, pack this thing out and be like, it's a vibe, the young people would say. And it's not much more than that, it's not less than that. So, like if you want to, comment if you want to, and subscribe if you want to. Until the next video, goodbye.